which beat Mark Sheehan 214 to 203 in the first round, while Bottomley defeated Alan Atkins 205 to 175. Joining me in the commentary team is Jeanette Baker and Terry Wenban. McLeish to lead off. Can she get off to a great start? Yes, she can. And she did this last year, hot out of the blocks against uh, Tony Roderick, who went on to win the competition. Well, again, we're looking at two younger bowlers. You know, he really don't have terribly much fear. They just go out and attack. And Sharon is a very good attacker of the shot. As we see here, tripping the six pin and all down. This is Carl Bottomley. He won the Cool Foam Classic, the Milton Grand Slam and the Strathpine Open. He finished second this year. Can he start off with a strike? Yes! And Carl has been bowling for 19 years. He's only 22 years of age. He won the uh, World Youth Masters in 88, the Senior FIQ Singles in 88, and in 89, the Queensland Open, as well as those uh, that are Cool Foam Classic in 91 and the Milton Grand Slam this year. So uh, he has been in good form, Jeanette. Well, he has. Carl's always a highly respected competitor. And again, we'll see another one of these power players. And if he gets striking, he'll just keep going. He locks in. Very strong bowler. On. Yes! And he is an exciting bowler to watch, of course. If he can continue this run, he has a double. If he bowls another 10 strikes in a row, he could take home the $10,000 from Sam Boy Chips. Of course, the first bowler to bowl the perfect 300 game here on television wins $10,000. Compliments of Sam Boy Chips. And uh, Sharon McLeish, too, in line for that prize. Let's wait for her second delivery. Get up. Yes! Oh dear, strike for strike here in the second round of the Goldpin Coca-Cola Classic. The fans at Richland's really enjoying it. As we look at uh, the record of Sharon McLeish, and she won two gold, two bronze in the Asian Zo uh, Youth uh, Zone Championships in Guam. And she won the Lake Macquarie Open in 1991. And uh, that tournament she won in 1990 and the Hunter Valley open so um, she too has a pretty good record coming into this tournament Sharon's a confidence player and she likes she has a total belief in her ability and she gets out there looking for the third oh not quite this time just a tad high she actually stood and watched it at the foul line she knew that it wasn't as good as the shot beforehand as we see up a little bit wobbly on that front knee standing there high but if you don't execute a good shot, very high at the foul line. Not quite taking it out. Single pin, going back for the spare now. Safely covers the spare. And Terry, these two could really put on a high scoring uh, match. Well, this has been the best start we've seen out of uh, any of the two players so far. They're both going for it strike for strike. Sharon in a match last year started out. Then uh, through a couple of wayward shots, I thought, in the middle. She's obviously learnt by the way she uh, trounced Mark Sheehan coming from behind with that great four-bagger. I think she wants to win, and against Carl, I think she'd really enjoy it, don't you think, Jeanette? Oh, well, particularly, you know, she's coming in the underdog, number one being a female, number two not bowling the big shot as we see Carl playing. Whoa. That's three. A fantastic start for Carl Bottomley, really appreciated by the crowd here at Richland's Bowl. As we see the shot, all oh, wrist, heaps of revolutions on the ball, into the pocket, and the four pin end up going off on the back right hand side. But again, using his height and his legs for leverage, using the wrist to get the desired reaction on the ball, and all ten pins go. Perfect start by Carl Bottomley, three out of three strikes. He leads by 11 pins over Sharon McLeish. We'll take a break and be back with more on Nights Wide World of Sport. Some of the big crowd here at Richland's 10 pin appreciating the exhibition that Carl Bottomley is turning on at the moment. Three strikes in a row. That is commonly referred to as a turkey. His opponent started off with a double and a spare. So really, the uh, match up in the air at the moment. And uh, Carl, once he gets that line, Jeanette, is very hard man to pull back. Exactly. He's not using the same piece of equipment as he, did, as he did in the first round of matches. Whether he senses that there's a little bit more oil out there on the heads, quite possibly. He's using... It's still polished, but it's a little bit softer. Oh! At one stage there, Terry, it looked like he had the 5-7-10. He broke it up with the, with the work he gets on the ball and came out with a 5-pin only. 
So we see here the wrist very much deep from the left hand side, using all the lane, coming back. There's the five, there's the seven, there goes the seven. You wouldn't have liked leaving a five seven, I can assure you. Oh, particularly the way they move the ball. Yeah, yeah no problem. And of course, Carl Bottomley representing the Cannon Hill Centre. And that is one of the member groups of the Gold Pin Association, which promotes 10-pin bowling throughout Queensland and Australia. Of course, 10-pin uh, bowling is the fifth most, most played sport in Australia, so there's plenty of uh, bowlers who partake. Exactly. It's one of the top five participation sports in the country. Yeah! Yes! Well called. She does come back strongly. Never give you an inch. <laughs> As I say, she's a tough little competitor. She grinds away. She's hardly missed the pocket this game. But we see a little bit tighter line, less of a point, more down the line, not getting quite so high. She's a good thinker of the game, thought it out, two high shots, and there we see the reaction. Good strike. And, uh, of course, she's been a member of the Rockway team and the youth team and the Australian team, so that gives her plenty of experience. Yeah. Oh. And now... A little shaky is Carl Bottomley, a bit of pressure coming back onto him. Well, Carl has seen Sharon perform through junior ranks as well. He's a power player, and as we've said before, the power player must always try and trust the shot. And even when you plant the foot at the foul line before you bring the ball through, you. you've got to still trust it. And there's a few variables that can bring you undone. Good cover. Easy spare. And is he uh, a good spare shooter, Terry? He is quite good. I was just thinking then, uh, a lot of these guys have improved their sparing over the last couple of years, and Carl's a very good sparer. I bowled with him all through the South Pacific that we've just uh, just had, and, and he uh, he spared pretty well there, and uh, I think he's going to go on with the goods today. But, you know, Sharon's been behind before, and she's come back. I think, that ma again, that match against Tony Roderick really seemed to mature a lot for these matches. It really did. She grew up a lot. She saw that uh, in women's tournaments, of course, you haven't got the big stringers of strikes. But in the men's tournaments... Oh, what a wayward shot, Carl. Crossed right over, hangs his head. He knows that that is not a good shot. But as we see here, through the target, elbow flinging out a little bit to the right, and over it goes. He was lucky to get nine out of that. The way it was moving towards the left, it was like he was never going to hit the head bit. We've seen, that with the, down. we've seen that with a few of these guys that turn the ball, haven't we? They've sort of dropped it shorter. They, as soon as they start to chicken wing that elbow, it just takes off to the left. This is it. They've got to focus on the wrist and lifting through the ball and not trying to turn it with the elbow. But we'll see how Sharon comes back now. She's opened a frame in the fourth. She's got a strike in the fifth, and she can get back into this game here. And uh, she really has gone a long way in the game for someone who only took up bowling when she was 13, and that was only seven years ago. That's right. Whoa! Oh! oh, oh is it? Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> it was a high shot, but <laughs> she'd be glad to get nine out of that one as we see her action. High backswing, getting the acceleration through the nose. Nasty split, but she got a tap from behind. I think the crowd was willing this last pin to fall as we watch it. Look at that. Uh, much stronger on the spare. Good execution. Actually, so far this game, she's bowled a very solid game. She's left, she's gone high a little bit, left the four pins. Exactly. She's had two six pins and the four pin. But we see here a confident spare shot using. And uh, she takes a break, as we will here on Nines Wide World of Sport. And uh, Carl Bottomley leading Sharon McLeish by 17 pins, and we're six frames down. <laughs> Welcome back to Nine's Wide World of Sport and our coverage of the Gold Pin Coca-Cola Classic for 1991 and an attempt at a World Cup wave. Well, we've seen better, but never mind. The action is on the lanes at the moment, and Sharon McLeish striving to overcome Carl Bottomley. So that uh, is serious business on the lanes. And both players really concentrating hard. McLeish looking to get a run happening. Oh, great shot that time. Much, much stronger shot. More down the line, more direct towards the target. Playing a bread and butter shot, which is down and in. Sharon doesn't cover a lot of lane for a left-hander, 
but she knows what she's good at, and there it is. Knee bent through the target, but that time leaving the seven pin in the left-hand corner. Now, let's see what she does here. Really needs to cover this. Can't afford to give Carl Bottomley too much start. Oh, oh. As right. soon as she let that go, it was way to the left of target. Nothing on it, it looked like it fell off her hand and straight in the channel. Now tell me, for those people at home not too au okay with bowling, would you have moved across a little further for the angle? Well, Sharon normally shoots through the third hour on the left-hand side for, for the seven pin, which is quite basic for um, left-handers, but that time I think her thumb just fell out of the ball and it was gone. Now, here's the opportunity for Bottomley. Does he seize it? Yes. Yes, he does. He needed that to get a bit of a spurt on and move away from Sharon McLeish, who has opened a frame. So a strike makes her pay dearly for that. Again, we see that angle over the top with a power player. The ball stays underneath the shoulder, close to the body, using leverage, using lift and heaps of wrist. It sends it out, brings it back and the desired result. I think Carl will be feeling a lot more confident, a lot more relaxed now that he can just go out and play his game because uh, he knows that Sharon come back, can come Mark! back. Ooh, light again on that side. He knows that Sharon can come back, but she's made two errors which are not good for the confidence, and he's just staying around the head bin. Yes, at this stage, if, uh, if Sharon strikes out, she's running at a 2.15 pace. Carl at the moment, if he just spares out, still going to shoot 210, so if he just stays clean, it's going to be okay, provided uh, Carl doesn't make any silly mistakes. Exactly. He's staying light, going back, getting the spares, using the same ball, but just bowling it very, very straight. Yeah, a lot of pressure on this 20-year-old from Newcastle. He's a control attendant at the Mayfield AMF Bowl. And her mother will be watching with uh, pride, I think. It's oh, been a absolutely. good performance. She uh, was indicative in the first round that she learned from last year. And, oh, breaks up the baby split that time. She has learned her lesson from last year, which was evident in the first round match. This time she's come out, she's solid. But with these power plays, Chris, you know that they have the ability and their, their bread and butter is, is just heaps of strikes. And um, as much as it's easy to say, when you're out there, the hardest thing to do is, you know, I'll play my bread and butter shot and, and, and that'll be enough to get me through instead of trying to string strikes like they do. Now, yeah, must be here. Yep, that was a better shot. Because of the technique that Sharon uses, it's very hard to um, even believe that she's missed two spares because her game is very, very basic and that's straight through. It's only in a really unusual moment that she'll sort of drop it short or, or send it wide. And because of the uh, fact that the ball she's using is polyester, a little bit of perspiration and it'll fly off her hand. Oh, high again. 4-7 that time. She has d been doing a lot of work on her game. She was, or oh, a couple of years ago, when I saw her at the um, National Junior Development Program, very, very late with her push away. And uh, she's worked very hard over the last couple of years to get the two together to allow the ball to be beside her when she releases it, instead of being still behind her back and never knowing how she's going to release the ball. Good cover that time. At that time. Not much uh, room for error in a shot like that, Jeanette. Well, again, it's keeping it simple and keeping it basic and, and just, uh, you know where to stand, you know where to look through the target and just trusting it through the target and getting the desired result. And what does uh, Carl Bottomley do here? Does he, he look up at the scoreboard and think, well, the, you know, my opponent's um, a little away behind. Do I relax here and go for the strikes? Well, or otherwise he could start turning the ball a lot more. Oh! <laughs> Oops. <laughs> kiss of death, they call me. <laughs> well, he, he actually seemed to soften that shot a little bit and play more area of the lane. Sent it out a little bit further, brought it back a long way, and that's the penalty he paid, is by not quite making it up to the pocket, leaving the split. Oh, oh. 
well, one with a tickle on the other, but no. Seven, one, he should have made sure of two, even though we are in a positive stage of the game for Carl. Have a look at that one again. He's got a sleeper behind here. Almost came off the back wall and a touch. And still a wry smile as he has a look at it. He's in front by 19 pins as we take a break here on Nine's Wide World of Sport. We'll be back with the 10th and final frame shortly. That's the 1991 Golf in Coca-Cola Trophy. One of these two will advance to the stepladder final and is a chance of taking that home along with $5,000 cash. And of course, a trip, for t uh, trip to Las Vegas for the 1991 High Roller Tournament. And that is worth half a million dollars. Let's have a look what Carl Bottomley can do here. Yes. Oh. Well, actually, if Carl strikes out in the 10th frame, he can shut Sharon out just by getting a spare and a strike. Um, no, Sharon still can't make it. He has to convert this spare. As we see, over on the Brooklyn, wobble on the nine pin, but still the single pin. He has to spare this to secure the game. Easy for us to sit here and the viewers at home, but there is a lot of pressure on this shot. <laughs> Wouldn't have wanted to go any wider. <laughs> Big game of fractions, yes. Exactly. A lot of the players just play mental arithmetic. They don't actually look at the scores. They know that they've closed so many and they've had a double and their opponents open some. So they know roughly using the mark system, which is, you know, a mark for a closed frame, two marks for a, a double, just roughly how much they are in front. Solid one to finish. It's a nice finish. That'll keep him happy for a second round, for a uh, stepladder final appointment. He'll take a seat and wait for his opponent to finish off her second round match. And it's been a pretty good performance in the tournament. Sharon McLeish, she uh, showed potential last year, but this year she's gone on with it. Beat Mark Sheehan in the first round and no disgrace to be beaten by Carl Bottomley. Exactly. She's, she's asserted herself well. She's attacked the head pin at every shot. There's only just two errors that she made there, which were very, very costly. And as we try and emphasise to people, especially in, in women's bowling, and it's no different in men, we've spoken so often about spare shooting, and that is you look after the spares and the strikes will look after themselves. So as long as you stay clean, you're, giving, you're actually putting pressure on your opponent. Covers that one nicely. And if she'd have done that on a couple of previous occasions, who knows? Well, she'll be chastising herself inside and saying, you know, what a fool am I. I've picked up those spares so many times over and over again. But nerves play a part. And particularly, as I said before, using a polyester based ball, that sweat can be a very damaging effect on the release of the ball. You have to make sure that hand is dry at all times. This is Sharon McLeish's final delivery in this year's tournament. Mm. And almost the perfect finish. She finishes with a nine count in the bonus ball in the 10th frame, but bows out. $200 compliments of Coke coming her way. And Carl Bottomley through to the step ladder final after a 200 to 181 victory.